love, slave was lost. that I was a man born out of due season. I've been born out of due season just like all we are, and the best testimony we can make is to leave it out there. As we would hear an oracle, celestial as thou art, oh, pardon, love this wrong, that sings heaven's praise with such an earthly tongue. But his fair tongue, conceits expositor, delivers in such apt and gracious words that aged ears play truant at his tales and younger hearings are quite ravished. <laughs> so sweet and voluble is his discourse. <laughs> the grosser manner of these world's delights he throws upon the gross world's baser slaves to love, to wealth, to pomp. I pine and die with all these living in philosophy. I have sworn an oath to receive the meed of punishment by thy sweet grace's officer. Therefore, welcome the sour cup of prosperity. <sighs> Is the fool sick? Consider who the king your father sends, to whom he sends, and what's his embassy. If you knew what was ailing you, you'd be glad to be stepping over tonight. But pardon me, I am too sudden bold to teach a teacher <coughs> ill beseemeth me. Oh, thou monster ignorance! How deformed does thou look! Invocation of a child, most pretty and pathetical. But alack, my hand is sworn, ne'er to pluck thee from thy thorn. Thou, alack, for youth unmeet, youth so apt to pluck a sweet. By heaven, the wonder in a mortal eye. Now God save thy life. Or, having sworn too hard a keeping oath, study to break it and not break my troth. These be the stops that hinder study quite and train our intellects to vain delight. Why? Mm -hmm. All delights are vain, <laughs> but that most vain which with pain purchased doth inherit pain, as painfully to pore upon a book to seek the light of truth while truth the while doth falsely blind the eyesight of his look. Light seeking light doth light of light Beguile, so ere you find where light in darkness lies, your light, your light, your light grows dark by losing of your eyes. Quick, quickly, 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 quickly. Nay, my good lord, let me o'errule you now. That sport best pleases that doth least know how, where zeal strives to content, and the contents dies in the zeal of that which it presents. Their form, confounded, makes most form in mirth, while great things laboring perish in their birth. Why should I joy in any abortive birth? Tell me the answer to that because I'm a prophet. And there's no way, no way we can survive. Necessity, 
will make us all forsworn three thousand times within this one night space. For every man with his affects is born, not by might mastered, but by all special grace. If I break faith, this word shall speak for me. I am forsworn on mere necessity. <sighs> oh. We have made a vow to study, lords, and in that vow we have forsworn our books. For when would you, my liege, or you, or you, in leaden contemplation have found out such fiery numbers as the prompting eyes of beauty's tutors have enriched you with. Other slow arts entirely keep the brain, and therefore finding barren practicers scarce show a harvest of their heavy toil. But love, first learned in a lady's eyes, lives not alone immured in the brain, but with the motion of all elements, courses as swift as though in every power, and gives to every power a double power, above their functions and their offices. <sighs> it adds a precious scene to the eye. A lover's eyes will gaze an eagle blind. A lover's ears will hear the lowest sound. When a suspicious head of theft is stopped, never durst poet touch a pen to write until his ink were tempered with love's sighs. Oh, then his lines would ravish savage ears and plant in tyrants mild humility. Please, for God's sake, let's get on with it. We've lived, we've lived as no other people have lived and loved. We've had as much of this world as you're going to get. Let's just be done with it. Let's be done with the agony of it. His tongue, all impatient to speak and not see, did stumble with haste in his eyesight to be. But to speak in words, which his eye hath disclosed, I have only made a mouth of his eye, by adding a tongue which I know will not lie. Mm. Truth is truth. You do the king, my father, too much wrong, and wrong the reputation of your name in so unseeming to confess receipt of that which so hath faithfully been paid. If broken then, it is no fault of mine. If by me broke, what fool is not so wise to lose an oath to win a paradise? Why, will shall break it, will and nothing else. This is the liver vein which makes flesh a deity. And to be corporal of his field, and wear his colors like, like a tumbler's hoop. Sweet Miss Prision, we have broken our mirrors. I tell you, I don't care how many dreams you hear, I don't care how many angry cries, death is a million times preferable to ten more days of its life. Now step I forth to whip hypocrisy. The roof of this court is too high to be yours, and welcome to the wide fields, too base to be mine. You nickname virtue, vice you should have spoke, for virtue's office never breaks men's troth. So much I hate a break cause to be of heavenly oaths bound with integrity. Which is the head lady? Thou shalt know her fellow by the rest that have no heads. And out of question.
question, so it is sometimes. Glory grows guilty of detested crimes when for flame's sake, for praise and outward part, we bend to that, the working of the heart. Oh, sweet lords, sweet lovers, let us embrace as true we are as flesh and blood can be. The sea will ebb and flow. Heaven, show his face. Young blood doth not obey an old decree. These earthly godfathers of heaven's lights <laughs> that give a name to every fixed star have no more profit of their shining nights than those that walk and wot not what they are. Too much to know is to know not but fame, and every godfather can give a name. We cannot cross the cause why we were born, therefore of all hands must we be forsworn. Let us once lose our oaths to find ourselves, or else we lose ourselves to keep our oaths. It is religion thus to be forsworn. <laughs>